Hi, I'm Kyle T. Mosley of HBCU Legends, as well as Black Sports Insiders. I'm here with a lady who should be getting some rest right now after the uh, past few months of putting on quite a show this past Sunday at the Orange Blossom Classic. It's none other than the executive director, Ms. Kendra Bullock Major. How you doing, Kendra? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good. Good. It's good to see you. I'm, I'm like, you, shouldn't you be just slowing down, but you just keep on going and going and going? Listen, I, I plan to take a little bit of time towards the end of this month. So, but you know, the days after the event, it's still a lot of work and closing out to do. So I'll, I'll get it in by the end of September for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, look, you guys had a nail biter. You had everybody riveted uh, to their seats to try to see what was going to happen in this very close contest against uh, Alabama State and NCCU, and mm -hmm. NCCU came on top, but uh, it was a great event all in all, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to get your quick thoughts on how you feel as though the event went. So like you said, Kyle, um, and thank you always for having me. It was definitely a nail biter. You know, those are things that are always positives from the television side. And we knew, you know, that this matchup was definitely going to be some really good football. Um, I mean, when you have two teams that, you know, just already good, already on top of their conference. And then, of course, to go into the season, you know, with the preseason rankings that really, you know, just made it even more exciting. So kind of knew that it was definitely going to be good football. We were, you know, fortunate enough to host. Um, you know, not just good as far as being on the gridiron, but just overall two really good teams. It was a joy to work with them. So, you know, definitely we're happy to have both of them here in South Florida. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a special time because even from the press conference on, was it Thursday throughout, mm -hmm. uh, you guys had a lot of auxiliary events mm -hmm. that uh took place the battle of the bands and things to that nature the, the seminars and the luncheon and everything i think all in all when you look at what you guys were able to put together once again was mm -hmm. very very successful um yes. we always talk about the economic impacts and everything else but there's a social impact talk about that a little bit Yes. So like you said, we had, um, you know, events that started as early as the Sunday before. So literally a full seven days of events. So we wow. incorporated pickleball this year, which, of course, is one of the fastest growing <laughs> sports. It, it's hot world. right yeah. now, right? <laughs> yes. So we had a, a really nice pickleball tournament. Um, we had our, you know, from a social standpoint, we in a community standpoint, we had our career fair, careers in sports and entertainment symposium. We had the opportunity to host some of the cast from a different world as a part of their tour so oh, wow. you know, we partnered with yeah we partnered with a couple of our which ones were uh, were there I'm so we had uh, Don Lewis and uh, who of course on the show was Jaleesa and we right. had Daryl Bell on the show who was Ron yeah. so they hosted a panel for us that really just talked about the status of HBCUs and of course how the show a different world helped to really um, you know put HBCUs, trying a very positive light on HBCUs and how it transcended multiple generations and encouraged people to choose HBCUs. So that was sure really would. good. We, um, again, like I said, hosted our career fair. So definitely from a community standpoint, we touched on a lot of different things. And that's what classics are all about. You know, you want to be able to have something for all ages and be able to, you know, have something from an entertainment side, from a social impact side. So on the entertainment side, we had our Battle of the Bands. We had um, some of our local high schools who participated. We also had our annual scholarship luncheon where Raheem Devon performed live. Oh, well, did he? Wow, okay. He's been yeah. a lot of different places lately. Yes. <laughs> and, and the uh, amazing attorney, Benjamin Crump, served as our keynote speaker. And Stephen A. Smith was one of our honorees. So definitely had a lot of people, you know, in town supporting us for that weekend. And then, of course, you know, Fan Fest just before the game, Two Chains was scheduled to perform. 
the rain kind of cut the performance short. Oh, but like yeah. I always say, you know, in the words of Outcast, you can plan a pretty picnic, but you can't always predict the weather, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, especially yeah. in South Florida, right? I mean, right. unless Two Chains wanted to do what Prince did with that Miami Super Bowl, you keep going <laughs> right. through through all the uh, rain. Matter of fact, Prince wanted more rain to come. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, not quite with 2 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wasn't having it, right? Yeah. Um, but Stephen A. Smith, uh, mm -hmm. we know that he is an HBCU alum from Winston-Salem, and mm -hmm. uh, you guys honored him. Talk a little bit about what went around that. Is that something that you guys plan to do each year? Yes. So we will. So our luncheon is always an opportunity. The theme is HBCU made. So we bring in different individuals who have, um, you know, matriculated through HBCUs and who are now making an impact in the areas of entertainment, sports, social justice. So Jennifer Williams, who, of course, oversees the USA Basketball Association, she was with us um, again, you know, Ben Crump with all of the work that he does on the social justice side. So the purpose of that luncheon every year is to acknowledge individuals who are making a difference on a global scale in those different areas. Wow. Wow. That's that's very, very good. Uh, I know Stephen E. Smith had some great things to say about you guys, as well as uh, Ben Crump. Uh, mm -hmm. When you look at the HBCUs and Look at what's happening with the event as a whole. Mm -hmm. What are some of the initial takeaways and feedback that you've been getting from the, the people that came to the event and they were there supporting the Orange Blossom Classic? Well, you know, most of the feedback, of course, is that as as usual, we were always complimented on the show that we, you know, put on and, and the events that we produce. So very, very grateful for that. I always say we're kind of like the newbies, the new kids on the block, right? So it's you know, always, you guys don't put on a newbie type of right. event. It's it's not that's a newbie small event. Now. Let's get yeah. this right. <laughs> yeah, so it always feels good to have those compliments, you know. Um Definitely know that there was some question marks around, oh, my gosh, why these two teams, you know, being in the state of Florida. But, you know, we like I said, it made for great football. And if you have to, you know, move away from the matchups that we saw in previous years, I think this was definitely the way to go. You know, unfortunately, we had the rain delays and, um, you know, of course, attendance had not been where it would normally have been over these last few years, but still had a lot of great successes. Found out yesterday that our ESPN numbers were very good. We had almost 700,000 people that tuned in wow. for the game. Awesome. And so, you know, when you have a game that comes down to the wire like this one, it does make for great television. And so that's definitely a plus that says that there's still an interest in the brand and that there's still an interest in the matchup overall. Um, you know, so again, now, happy about when, that. When you guys talk about the ESPN numbers, you talk about 700,000 people viewing, I'm pretty sure they have more than that. Uh, when you take, when you take into account these local bars and everything else to that nature, are these the numbers that uh, really say we are trending in the right direction? Absolutely. You know, and think about it. We had almost 700,000 people that tuned in and, you know, we dealt with multiple rain delays. So right. midway through the game, we had to move over from ESPN to ESPN News because, of course, baseball was right after. And so what it says with our partnership with ESPN, because something like that, if you have to move to another network, ESPN News is the ideal network for them to switch you to. And, you know, it wasn't a streaming situation where people had to go in and download the ESPN Plus app. It wasn't, you know, ESPN 3. So to say, hey, we've got to move on because we don't know what's happening with the rain and we do have baseball that's scheduled, but we're moving you guys to the next best thing speaks volumes about, again, what the game was from a competitive standpoint, as well as what the overall Orange Blossom Classic brand has come to mean, you know, and, and overall what HBCU yeah. football has come to mean to HBCUs. You know, we um, 
when the numbers come out, of course, we get ratings from all of the games for that week. And so we were still the highest rated of the other HBCU games that were on that same weekend. So congratulations. That, yeah. So that that says a lot as far as, you know, again, when you're looking at potential matchups, those are the type of things that you want. You want two teams that are going to draw that level of interest. So we're feeling very good about that.